She ain't sorry, Chad. Uh-oh. Psych. <laughs> All right, y'all. It's your boy, Eric. My bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> www.969kgpc.org. No, that's not it. All right, y'all. What's up? It's your boy, Eric, that boy in media for uh, another episode. Actually, this is going to be the last episode of the season. Actually, the last episode, episode six. And, um, you know, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been rocking with me, supporting me, uh, sharing, commenting, all of that good stuff. Even the haters, you feel me? You know, got to, you know, always be let them be your biggest motivation. So, you know, just thank y'all for staying with me. You know, it hasn't been easy, especially during this pandemic. So I want to thank y'all for, for all the support and love out there. And uh, like I said, it's the last episode, episode six, but don't worry, I got more episodes and I got a few other episodes that I'm going to be working on uh, uh, coming, up, coming up soon. So definitely stay tuned to that. But on this note, uh, I got uh, my homie, uh, one of the greatest R&B cats in the game right now, in the Bay right now, killing it. Veteran in the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Veteran in the game, you know. So uh, without no further ado, I'm going to have him introduce himself and a little bit about what he does. And we're going to chop it up and just have some conversation and uh, talk about this new album that he got coming out. So go ahead. Yo, uh, Cash Campaign in the building. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, if, if you met me before, you might have seen me on this show before. But if you did, uh, if, yes. if, if you did yes. back then, you know what I'm saying? I'm a whole new person now, personal growth, you know what I'm saying? Uh, nah, but I'm Cash Campaign, aka Mr. <laughs> Meet Your Parents, aka Dr. Cash Campaign. Uh, yes. You know, Dr. We will Cash talk about Campaign. that a little later, too. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. We in the building, man. I'm so happy to be here. Wow, we back in the building, man. The last yes, time I seen you, it was pre-pandemic. It sure was. And we still making moves. Yes, that's sir. Crazy. That's, that's that's how you know we're not gonna stop. Absolutely not. You know, and we you know we the brothers in America, so you know yeah. grind don't never stop. Ever. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we, don't, we don't know what's what's a pandemic when when our ancestors made it through Jim Crow. You feel me? What's a pandemic? When our ancestors made it through... Nah, I'm not going to go into it. I'm not going to go into it. Shut up, Martin Luther King, man. I'm brother. You know what I'm uh, I mean, come on now. Come on now. You know? Preach that. Preach exactly. that. But yeah. Um, yeah. We here. Uh, last time you was here... Actually, that was a long day. That was a good... It was a long day, but it was a good day. It was a good day. day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Day. But yeah, that it was... was, was uh, I think the last time... We saw each other. I was at a different radio station, and we was talking about the music that you had back then. Yeah. And now you're wow. back, stronger wow. than ever. Um, got yes. this new record coming out. Yeah. Got the new s- single. Yeah. Believe me. Hot. Hot. You hot, like hot. that? Yes. You like that? Yes, sir. That's, that's what yes, sir. Was, boy. <laughs> that's what it was, Believe me, was. And it's so crazy when you record an album, man. When you record a single, mm-hmm. and it, any song, like when you record a song and it's mm-hmm. just meant to be. It be it's so easy. Right, right, you know right, 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 right. And like, believe me, was one of those songs. Like, believe me, was I, like, I can see that. It was like done, and I was like, man, that's all I'm gonna do. And I was like, you know what? That's all I need. Bro. Uh, you know I, I was saying? like, it's so good. Like, it'd be like, damn. Like, can I get a remix, Brandy? You know you independent. Hey, Let's get a remix. Bro, I prayed on that. <laughs> I prayed on that. I literally was in my room, like, Lord Jesus, um, <laughs> if you, if your your humble servant, Lord. If you so see it, could you please have Brandy hear it and be like, you know what? I got to get on this. And then my whole life changed. That's Man. it. That's what I need. Be nominated for a Grammy? Right. Oh, I wouldn't even need that. The fact that she got on wait, it. Wait, I'm, I'll don't, be like, okay. I'm, we're you know, we're going to go further. Right. Nominated for a Grammy? Yeah, exactly. On the charts? On the charts. Woo! On the charts. I would take her on it and being like, this is so dope. And then... On the charts, I'd take that. I'd be that. That that'd be high. I'd be that'd like, that's good. So, Brandy, you know what I'm saying? But um, you know, you got this new record out, the yeah. Believe Me track. Yeah. Uh, played twice already on ninety six point nine. Let's go. KGPC Let's radio. Go. Yes. And um, so, I mean, going back into the studio because you know, we've been a lot. We've been going through a lot with this pandemic and whatnot. Yes, sir. How does it feel? Because your last record was in 2017. So how does it feel coming back? Like Man. so many things have changed. The Let way see, you wait, put me music out. My last album in 20. No, no. My last album 2019. 2019 excuse yeah, me. Yeah, it was. It was 2019. Cause 2022. Yeah. I didn't lost track. Cause we've been in the pandos. Yeah. We've been in the pandos for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> I didn't lost track of time. 
But no, I think my last album came out in September of 2019. So that was like a couple of months before everything. Exactly. That was like maybe six months before the whole world shut down. Because I had a whole plan, bro. I was like, okay, I'm going to release this album. The album was doing numbers. Like the album, to this day, that album did more streams online than any album. And I'm not talking about singles. I'm talking about like the, the entire album, album mm-hmm. did over a million streams. Wow. So if we talking about streaming awards, yeah. like that album is streaming platinum. It did 500,000 on Spotify alone. Like just on Spotify, wow. the album did 500,000 on Spotify. Sheesh. Apple Music, SoundCloud, you know, Tidal, all that. We talking about like 1.5 million. So I'm looking at it like- Was oh, the royalty it, check nice? I mean, it, they, they nicer than they ever been. How about that? Like they, cause you know, streaming, you ain't gonna get rich off streaming. You gonna get, you, you you go get some shoes off streaming unless you're Drake then you might get a car off streaming but like streaming they're not finna pay you like millions of dollars but I will say that I started I remember the first check that I looked at from my streaming for this album I was like yo I could like like where y'all wanna go like that's what my, I thought I was like yo y'all wanna go out let's go somewhere like off of that streaming check so nice. that was good right cause you know Pandora right. all that like right, whatever right, right, right. so I was like okay it's doing numbers automatically it's tour time like we doing shows where we at we in because i did i did shows off my last album mm-hmm. for two years like i did oh, wow. i was touring off the album for two so you years was eating good i was i was in atlanta doing shows i was in san francisco santa cruz i was all across the country doing shows and hosting club events just off these records so i was like oh this record is going these songs is going crazy so i'm like oh pff, it's easy we doing we, where we at? We in Texas, we at all these schools, we at all these places. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as I was starting to book, like as soon as I was like, okay, this festival, this thing, that thing, pandemic, everything's canceled, mm-hmm. everything. Like you couldn't even go to the studio. So I was yeah. like, man, like, I didn't know what to do. How did you how did you get through that moment you know how how, like you know as far as us talking about mental health and especially as men especially as black men right you know when it comes to depression and mental health of of that sort so how did you get through that moment and for those who are watching and, and paying attention right now um that young person that is probably going through what you went through right how can you let them know how you got through it man um I mean, the first thing I did was, you know, I was on pause like everybody else. Like, I don't want people to think like, because some people will be like, oh, the grind don't stop, bruh. Nah, the grind stopped. Like, <laughs> yeah. I didn't have nothing to do. Like, did. I didn't go to the studio. Right, right, right. I didn't go do no shows. Right, right. I was at home. Right. Like, I went from going to work mm-hmm. every day and going to the studio and shooting videos for like maybe four or five months. I was just at home. Like, right. I didn't even right. know, like, I was really, you know, in the mindset where like, damn, if you go outside, you might get the, you might get the vid and it might kill you. Like, that's how I felt. Mm. So I was like, I'm at, I'm at the house. Like Mm. people was, man, we should go do this. We should go do that. Then we talk about it. Nah, you right, man. We, it's crazy out here right now. Like I didn't see homies for like six, seven months. Mm. So what I just decided in the summertime, cause everything really went crazy in March. Mm -hmm. So what I decided was like in like maybe three months in, I was like, I gotta find a way to record, mm-hmm. right? And the only way I knew how to do that, I was like, I gotta build my own little recording setup. Mm-hmm. And that's what I did. Like, I literally just, I went on Amazon and I just asked my recording friends, like, what would you get? What would you get? What would you get? Mm-hmm. And they told me, I made a list. And every paycheck, I just bought another thing, another thing. And if it was cheap, like $25 or $35, I'd buy like two or three things. The most expensive thing I got, I think, was my audio interface and the microphone and but like i got that and then i got i got pro tools and i was and i had never i've been recording for years since mm-hmm. 2006 i've been in the studios but like i had never recorded a song myself i had never sat at the board i had never done that i felt like god was like if you want to make this a thing you gotta do it you gotta gain this skill mm-hmm. so you could do whatever you need to do whenever you need to do it mm-hmm. And I was scared because I was like, damn, like, what if I mess this up? Mm-hmm. I don't know how Pro Tools work. Pro Tools is temperamental. It'd be weird. Like, mm-hmm. but 
that and and to classify that 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 is the 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 software yeah to record yeah to record <clears throat> music i mean there's a few ones but like i use pro tools because that's what i've been recording in for the longest time mm -hmm. so i bought pro tools i got all my equipment and then I set everything up, right? And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm finna record. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was doing. Like, I remember my boy asked me, he was like, Casey Cope, shout out to Casey Cope. Um, he was like, I need you to get on this song. And I was like, cool. And so I recorded some like, you know, some tracks for the song or, you know, some takes for the song. And I couldn't send it to him. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn, this should, should be easier than this. I'm like, yeah, I can't send it. I can't even find the file on my computer, like all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Come to find out I'm using the trial version of Pro Tools and they don't let you share files on the trial version. So I was like, damn, I recorded the whole shit for like two hours and I can't even send it. Can't transfer it over, nothing. Couldn't do, I mean, it was, bro, like, I got a million of those stories. But at the end of the day, I just decided I was gonna do it myself. Mm -hmm. And I've had some, I have help from my friends and you know, all that type of stuff. But the album that we're talking about right now, 90% of it was written, executive produced, and recorded by me. And that's that's a pandemic blessing right there. Mm -hmm. Like, cause I before the pandemic, I couldn't record a thing. But now I could go in the studio and write a song and take a beat and finish a whole song by myself. Believe Me was the first song I recorded, yes, sir. written, yes, sir. And did all by myself. And it got mixed by my boy Ian McKee, shout out to the mechanic. But recording, writing, all that, that was me. I recorded that my, by myself alone in a room. And, and you know, now that we were, you know, we getting good into the to the interview, we how about we just do a music break right quick? You yeah. believe me. Yeah. It's your boy Eric, that boy Media with Do Rags and Conversations. You know, we chopping it up with my boy Cash Campaign, and we got the new record coming out tonight. Yeah. And that was the newest track off the album, Believe Me, by Cash Campaign. And yeah. make sure to stream this episode on www.kgpc969.org and make sure to uh, stream this uh, and view this episode on YouTube at that boy media tv and media and uh getting it more into the record yeah uh how was how was the creative experience behind this behind this album man uh yeah i was hoping you asked me that because it's crazy like because i said this was the first song that i wrote and mm -hmm. recorded just by myself right and, right and put out so i actually have booked the Airbnb. so what i started doing was instead of going to studios mm -hmm. what i would do is i would book airbnbs like studio airbnbs like just studio rooms with you know maybe like just a, a couch in there with a bed and mm. desk and you know just a studio um little space and i would set all my stuff up in there on like a table or a desk and i would just record in there um and at first i was like damn i'm spending you know like 150 on these bad boys but i was like when i go to the studio i'm spending like like I was spending at one point I spent like three four hundred dollars on a studio to book it out for like five six hours so I'm like no, no wonder why some people music don't be all that you know what I'm saying like it's it's a crazy you know it's, it's an expense mm. you know I remember once I went to the studio in San Francisco and they was like it's six hundred dollars to book the studio out for the whole day I'm like Ooh, wee. Yeah, that's just like 12 hours you know what I'm saying but you need an engineer you need all that stuff and all that so I'm like man if I'm spending 150 just so for the whole and I can stay in the Airbnb all night if I want to which I probably won't, you know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna go back to the house, but I'm just there to record, right? So I'm like, okay. But I booked the Airbnb in North Oakland, shout out to Ice City. And like, I just booked the Airbnb, mm -hmm. 
And I went in there, set all my stuff up. Mm-hmm. I grabbed like a bottle of wine and some some fire wings, some chicken wings. Shout out to fire wings. <laughs> I need my endorsement. Um, and I was in there, man. I lit some candles. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And and let me let me pause right there and say, look, man, men, especially black men, mm-hmm. especially urban black men, mm-hmm. don't be afraid to buy some candles, bro. Like, and don't go to the Dollar Tree. Let me say that into the mic. Don't go to the Dollar Tree. Go to TJ Maxx and get you some $4.99, $7.99, poured candles, like locally poured candles. You will appreciate yourself and she will appreciate you more. Just do that. $9.99 if you want to be fancy. But anyway, you feel me? Of course, you know, lit some candles. I'm chilling in my space. And I just I had the beat. Mm-hmm. I wrote the song before I got there because I'm a, I'm a, I'm sometimes I'm a proponent of like write the song before you get there so you know what you're finna do, all right? So you ain't gotta worry about that. You just gotta worry about like your ad libs and all mm-hmm. that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I sat in there, man, and I just recorded the song and I recorded each verse and I figured out what I was doing wrong, what I was doing right. Recorded it, paused, ate, had a glass of wine, came back, second verse, ad libs, all that, mm-hmm. and then later maybe like. A month later, I had another space that I was in, and I just did all the backgrounds and ad libs for it. Wow. Not even no verses, no lyrics, nothing. Just oohs and eyes and backgrounds and ad libs. And then I was like, "Yo, this song is good. This is a good song." And I sent it to my mixing engineer Ian, and he mixed it, and then we put it out. And I and and once that song came out. You couldn't tell me nothing, bro. Like right, I was right. like, "Yo, I, right. I, I could do it now. Right, like right, I could right. make songs that people want to play." Right, right. And, and that was it. So, believe me, came out and man, it's been doing hot. numbers. And you know what I'm saying? It's, I slap that every morning. I'm telling you, it's <laughs> it's it's the perfect blend of new school and nineties. It is, it is. It is. And, and that's when I when I heard the beat, I was like, "That's what I need right there." So shout out to Brandy for it's, the remix. <laughs> you see me claiming it? You seen that? Shout you out to for the remix. You feel me? You feel me? Oh. Um, yeah, that, I mean, just shout out to the Bay. You know, yeah. we got so many talented cats in the in the Bay area, Say that, and bro. they really don't give us our props. And you know, we're so talented. Right. You know, you producing, songwriting, right? Executive producing the whole entire record. You feel me? I mean, that's dope, and much yes. much success on this on this new album. Uh, so, what what kind of artists you got on the on the album? Like, man, what kind of features you got? Let me see. So this album, I wasn't trying to do too many features as far as like vocalists and rappers and stuff like that. Because on uh, my album Somerset, I had a bunch of, I had a good amount of people. Like probably half the records had like features and stuff. But I think for this album, I only have two people that are actually singing on it. Oh, okay. And, um, one is Caitlin Leanne because my Evermore record is on there. Our Evermore record is on there. Uh, one of the best records I ever did. Um, and then I have a song on there that's re ridiculously crazy called uh water that has me and yes. sabrina shauna on there so yes. I, saw, I heard um, that one nice record i mean both of them records is like ridiculously crazy like evermore is like it went crazy it just i mean it's still sit, it's sitting at over a million at this point wow. online like almost two million streams like wow. across all platforms for evermore y'all um, y'all hear this you feel me that was Kevin bay Leanne. area artist that was independent yeah that was Kevin leanne that wasn't me bro. I was two million there. streams you feel me i was just i was just along for the ride i was like okay i i know i know when to hit mm-hmm. get written for me when i know you know well, what I, you know i smell so, a grammy nomination coming coming that's what i'm talking about that's what we need let me get an ama <laughs> and grammy yeah, you feel me? i mean even though those awards don't validate the artist but you know it's nice to be recognized you right you right and that's a whole conversation right there man it's so crazy GC on the track boy you have been telling
why do you feel like maybe it might be a shortage of R&B artists? It's maybe rap, maybe the route to go. Like, why why we ain't getting no more R&B artists, especially male artists? I feel like, man, so I'm going I'm to name some artists off for sure so we can, so I can make sure. And, and if I leave your name out, it's not because I don't love you. It's because, you know, we only got so much time and I can't think. I didn't make a list before this. But I think right now we got Christian Curia. If you ain't never heard of him, you got to get familiar. He's going crazy online. Uh, he's from Vallejo. Okay. Um, you got Sabrina Shauna, she's from Daly City. Um, you got Kaden Leanne, she's from East Oakland. You know what I'm saying? You got Raven Justice from East Oakland. You got myself. I'm not from the Bay, but I am. I'm a transplant, but I'm out here. You know what I'm saying? We out. Well, we gonna we gonna make an exception for you. See you what I'm you know, hit like me, hit me in, on the shoulders and be like, I'm you. you feel me? My mama's from Berkeley. She went to Berkeley High. You feel me? So you know, we out here. Anyway, um, you know, you got. It's talent out here, you know. Saying shout out to Kaylani. Uh, the funny thing is, Saweetie actually is from Sacramento. She actually went to high school around the corner from my house, and she went to high school with my brother for a minute. Oh, because so, she she claimed when she from Hayward. Well, she got family just like me. She from Sac, but she got family out here. So and okay. then she went to you know SC to go to school. You know, what okay, I'm saying? Like, okay. She, she doing her thing. I'm not. I'm not Absolutely. taking away from so. And the funny thing is, my high school basketball teammate. He actually signed Saweetie. He worked for uh, her label, and he signed her because he was like, "You Sac, I'm finna make you pop." And so, shout out to that Sacramento love. But, like, at the end of the day, I feel like the Bay is just so much of a beast when it comes to rap that it's just hard when you're an R&B artist because, like, everybody want to bounce in the Bay. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody want to, hey, hey. That's and it's true. like, that's not, ain't nothing wrong with that. But, you know. Let's get some versatility. I feel like people forget that Tony, Tony, Tony from the Bay. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Keisha Cole from the Bay. Yes, sir. Like, sometimes you just got to sit back, guapole. You just got to yes, sit sir. back and be in your feelings. And I feel like, man, that because closer still be well, knocking. Still, right? <laughs> but I feel like dudes don't want to. Like I feel like we just hit a corner where like people don't want to sit back and be in their feelings right now. They just want to do like, hyphy moves. They just want to. They just want to be like bring hyphy back. It's like I feel I'm not mad at that. I love the hyphy movement, bro. Like Mr. Fab, everybody like you know what I'm saying. Turf talk, everybody like they federation. Was my, they're federation. The they federation. They was they was on my playlist every party every you know what I'm saying. The team, shout out to Clyde Carson. I did a show with Clyde Carson. I opened for Clyde. How, how is Clyde Carson? Clyde Carson is the coolest dude. He cool? I mean, I, from what I met, he's okay. the coolest dude in the world. Okay. Like, he's chill. Everything. I did. I opened up for E40. Like it's all. It's all G. I love Sheesh. the hype movement. The Bay sound has been jocked across the board. Say that one more you time, know, please. The Bay sound has been jocked, aka stolen a little bit across the board. And I'm not mad, like, because it's, it's it's undeniable. Mm -hmm. But I feel like. I feel like Bay Area R&B will get more credit when people are cool with slowing down and being in their feelings. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like this is the diff this is when Bay Area R&B will be something. When people say I'm in my feelings, bruh, mm -hmm. instead of being like you in your feelings, bruh. Mm -hmm. It's two different connotations mm -hmm. and you got to be willing to be like, "Look, man, like I'm chilling, but I'm like I'm feeling the way right now." Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't but I don't mind feeling it. Right, 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 right. And so, but you know when people didn't mind feeling it when Keisha Cole dropped her stuff, everybody was like, "Dudes was 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 tipsy singing that love song, mm -hmm. just just loud, just mm -hmm. loud singing it, <laughs> Guapla, playing that in that scraper." Like right. you know what I'm saying? You right. gotta be you gotta be man enough to do that, and I'm I, that that's a challenge to me. Like you man enough to do that, you man enough to be like, "Hey, baby girl, we not riding around to like you know what I'm saying? The turn mm -hmm. up, whatever. We finna ride around right now to." Uh, some smooth, some Adrian Marcel. We, yes, we, sir. Shout out to Adrian Marcel. Yes, we, sir. And that's it. We finna ride around to some Kaylani right now. We finna, you know what I'm saying? Because what you think? She finna be like, that's some soft. That you be like, you know what I'm saying? Soft. That's right. Because I am a little, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? With my feelings right now. Mm -hmm. So there it is. What was the? What was your favorite process Ooh. of the record? Whoa! Wow. Okay. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. My favorite one was um, what had to be Evermore. Because that was the one I recorded, you know, pre-pandemic mm -hmm. in the studio. Mm -hmm. It was hella organic. Okay. And it was just like two. It was me, Caitlin, my engineer, Kevin. Like, we was just all just in the studio. And we was just like, I got this. And mm -hmm. wrote this. Boom. Hop in the booth. Do it. I got this. Hop in the booth. Sing it. Boom. And I'm going to add this part. You can't top. Like, you can't. I call them cook sessions where you just like literally just adding stuff. Like. You can't top that. So that was my favorite. That would be my favorite one. But I love all of them, bro. Because, you know, I made all of them. Right, and they right, all right. are unique. But and hopefully some babies get made to them, too. You hear me? <laughs> I guess we saying don't wrap it up. 
because that's how babies get mad. Whatever. It's all good. I love y'all. Well, it's wrap it up to the ones that you love for all the this yeah, for the lovers. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So yeah, I'll meet you here tomorrow, man. It's coming out tonight, yes. 9 p.m. It's gonna be out. Um, run them numbers up, man. Not because I need the money, because you yeah. need the love in your life. That's what I'm saying. Yes, Valentine's Day around the corner. You know, feel me? Feel me? That wasn't a coincidence. <laughs> you feel me? Well, uh, name that album one more time and let the audience know where uh, they can find it, where they can stream it at, and give us your social and shout out all the the, the pr- people that was a part of this process and all of that good stuff. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Cash Campaign. I'm right here in your ear again. Uh, C-A-S-H-C-A-M-P-A-I-N Go online, type that into Google Type that into Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, YouTube And check out my new album I'll meet you here tomorrow Featuring the incredible singles Indelible, Evermore, Water um, Believe me You (laughs) did Check them things out Uh, because, you know, don't run them numbers up for me. Run it up because you need it in your life. That's all I'm going to say. And, you know, to support the R&B, support, you know, R&B, t- you know, it's kind of slowly losing its way. So that's, you know, R&B was here before rap, before all of that. So, say that. It, you know, R&B is the mother of Africa, you know, so, so support R&B, support, support our independent artists. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, King. For coming yeah. through and not only do you have this music career but you got the phd you Ooh, feel me hashtag campaign <laughs> you know what i'm saying but wait make sure they don't know we just saying that like to sound cool like i for sure do have my phd and oh absolutely so i just want to make sure that that's a sound bite like you could also do music and make r&b and be singing love songs or rap or whatever but also have your phd because that's what i do so yes, there we go that's it yes sir and so thank y'all again once again another installment of do rags and conversations this is actually the season finale of season two thank y'all so much <laughs> thank you thank you thank you uh 500 plays for season one and season two um so thank y'all for those numbers thank y'all for supporting and listening thank you to felicia bridges for this opportunity this awesome opportunity at 969 kgpc radio uh, and thank y'all, if I am for filming this, uh, loyalty for your loyalty. You know, you've been we've been doing this since season one, so thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Cash Campaign, for coming through. Got that new album coming out. Yeah, yeah. Tonight, go get it. So support it. Black music, independent music, R and B music. Yeah, yeah. Let's go.